Hi, and welcome to my video lesson on cardiac preload. So what exactly is cardiac preload? Cardiac preload is the stretching of the ventricles or atria while they are filling with blood. Preload is a term that can be applied to either of these chambers just before contraction. So preload can refer to atrial preload or ventricular preload. The term applies to either chamber. Let's apply the preload concept to a real-world example to make understanding this concept a little bit more simple. So in my diagram here, I have a heart that's illustrated with both chambers and both sides of the heart. So let's say you're out for a run. During your run, the body will increase cardiac output. If you don't know what cardiac output is, I highly recommend that you pause or stop this video and look at my video lesson on cardiac output, which is located on my channel homepage. It will help you understand what I'm about to say a little bit more clearly so you can get the most out of this lesson. Now, getting back to the preload concept. So, because of exercise and this run in our example, increased cardiac output will increase the amount of blood slightly returned to the heart. When the blood returns to the heart, it is called venous return. I have venous return here on my diagram with this kind of like light blue shaded arrow coming into the right atrium. So the reason that it's blue is to denote that there's no oxygen in the blood or it's very oxygen poor. So as it returns from the body and is emptied and collected into the right atrium, you need to remember too that in general, when you're looking at a heart diagram, even in science textbook, textbooks, that the right side of the heart in a diagram is on the left part of the drawing, and the left side of the heart is on the right part of a science or anatomical drawing. Make sure you don't get those two sides confused. I know that when I was in college, I got that confused quite a bit. So just to review, Again, the right side of the heart, physiologically inside me and you, when you're looking at a diagram like this, is on the left side. So if you separate it, it's on the left side. So right on left, left on right. So again, make sure you don't get that too confused. Now, getting back to our example, as blood pours in from the body through the vena cava, which is kind of like the emptying point into the right atrium, the cardiac myocytes, which is the technical term for heart muscle cells, myo meaning muscle, site meaning cell, so cardiac muscle cell. Those little guys begin to stretch, and this stretching allows the atria to fill up with more blood to accommodate the increased venous return. As a small aside, there is a relationship to the amount of stretching in the heart and the subsequent pressure and contractile force that occurs. This is known as the frank Starley mechanism, and I'll save that topic for another time in another video. Just know that it is an important property of the heart, but really isn't necessarily tied in with preload per se. Anyway, getting back on topic, getting back to our preload concept, when the pressure difference between the right atrium and right ventricle, just isolating the right side in this case, becomes very large due to the right atrium being highly pressurized because of all this pooling blood, the tricuspid valve, which is right here, on the right side of the heart opens, causing all of this blood to flow into the right ventricle. Okay? If we now apply the term preload to this example now, with all this blood here in the right ventricle, we can say that now the right ventricle is experiencing ventricular preload because it is now in the process of filling with blood. Okay? Remember, preload refers to the stretching of the ventricles or atrium while they are filling with blood. So this, the atrium is no longer in preload state as, it, oh, as this valve opens, the tricuspid valve opens and ejects the blood into here, into the ventricle, the right ventricle. So that's kind of the basic introduction to this concept. 
before I end this video, I want to touch base on some factors that can influence preload, and I'll talk a little bit more about these factors in my next video and how they essentially influence what happens with the heart, kind of tying all these threads together to make a bigger story. So there are several factors that increase or decrease preload, and I just want to mention a few of those briefly. Some factors that can decrease preload, the biggest one is blood loss due to hemorrhaging or some type of injury. The second, there's many more than these, but these are just kind of the big ones. An increased heart rate will also lend itself to a decreased preload. And the reason for that is, is if you have an increased heart rate, you're not going to have nearly enough time in these chambers to fill, which kind of reduces the preload, the amount of time that these chambers can load with blood. Some factors that can increase preload are holes in either the mitral, which is on the left side of the heart, or the tricuspid valves. Holes in those valves are referred to as stenoses or stenosis. That will be covered more in depth in one of my next videos. But another factor that can increase preload is the, a decreased heart rate. And if you look at my video on cardiac output, you'll understand why. A decreased heart rate 